a division of Bell Media. Welcome back live at noon. Well, the decision came down at five minutes of four this morning from the Labor Relations Board. We're joined now by employment lawyer Soma Ray Ellis to talk about that decision. Not that you were there right at five to four. I know you were, acting, were not acting on this, but uh, you've seen the summary of the decision. And a lot of people are wondering, well, what took 13 hours to, uh, to talk about, to argue about? There is a contract and the teachers are saying, well, we're going to go out and protest today during the school hours. So how was that weighed? What considerations came to bear, Soma? You know, my son said to me this morning, what is going on? He's 10 years old and he doesn't understand how two days before he could be told that there's no school and then today he has to go to school. Good point. You have a smart son. And, and what did you say? I said to him that there are competing rights here. There is the Ontario Labor Relations Act. Right. And the goal of that act is industrial peace, economic stability, and the collective bargaining process. And then you have the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And under Section 2, you have the fundamental freedoms that are protected, such as freedom of expression, including political protest. So that's what took such a long time in terms of understanding the balancing of those rights. What we know is that when there is a collective agreement in place, then any work stoppage because of the definition of strike under the labor relations legislation, which is extremely broad, any cessation of work, refusal of work, will mean an illegal strike. So you have that, and then you've got to balance that out with, well, what does it mean when I am told that I have a right to protest, that I have these fundamental well, rights? You have the right to protest, but right. not during the school hours That's if you're a teacher, is that exactly it? So the courts historically and the tribunals have said, there are other ways of you exercising your right without disrupting and causing economic harm and social harm. There are other ways of exercising those rights. And part of that is also in the Charter, because the Charter says these rights that you have are, have to be reasonable under Section 1, that all of these rights that you have, are all, there's a test that you have to meet. Your behavior has to be reasonable. And it's not reasonable to want to exercise this right to protest when you have a contract and you're yes. trying to do it during school hours. Exactly. So, I mean, I mean, you explain it so so clearly and so well. Was that not understood yesterday at this time? Why did it take 13 hours to rehash this? I think the you know when you look at the decision, the uh, counsel for the teachers tried to say that the the chair of the OLRB shouldn't be dealing with it because they have another action dealing with the constitutionality of Bill 115. Right. But that's a separate issue altogether. This was not the first time that the OLRB had to decide whether a what is was being called a political protest was in effect an illegal strike. So the chair said, "No, no, well, I'll listen to you, but I've dealt with you know we've dealt with these issues before. We know how this works." So everybody wanted to still have their day in court, so to speak, to put the arguments up, and and some lawyers want to try to chip away to see if eventually they could probably chip away at the. It's not prohibition on to exercise you know, your right to protest during the contract hours. Right. But they're trying to get away with that, aren't they? That's right. And That's so right. Is this, this isn't a precedent then, really. I mean, it's a they precedent, know. but it's not, you know, it's not a new precedent. This, the, these issues have come up before, and we've seen a consistent approach by both the tribunals and courts Canada-wide in terms of how they deal with these issues. Okay, I have five seconds left. Does this buy labor peace for the next year and a half? Let's hope so. So, Ray Ellis, always good to have your uh, analysis and, and your predictions. And thanks for coming in. <laughs> My pleasure. Good to see you. We're going to uh, take a break. And when we come back, we're going to go some more protesting and expressions of uh, rights going to Ottawa with Craig Oliver and see what's going on with the natives. Stay with us. With the Bell Mobile TV.